It has been seven years since we last received a new game in the Splinter Cell series. One of the biggest, most successful and most recognisable franchises in gaming. Yet Splinter Cell developers Ubisoft seem to have completely lost interest in the title. But why? Since the last game in the series, Blacklist, was released, we have had seven new Assassin's Creed games, five Far Cry games, two Division games, two Ghost Recon games, and a ton of other releases. Now, there has been some rumours that a new game could be in development, but nothing has been confirmed. Now, as Splinter Cell is one of my favourite games of all time, I thought it would be interesting to look at what exactly killed off the series. Now, I know what you're thinking. It probably has something to do with money. Well, you'd be right. Sort of. Sales for Splinter Cell games have gradually decreased with each release. Of course, there have been some exceptions, but the developers seem to increase targets and expectations with each new title, and when it doesn't reach these new goals, it is deemed a disappointment. However, they know that it isn't interest in the property or the character that is lacking as they continue to include the protagonist, Sam Fisher, in multiple other games, such as the Ghost Recon games. Something that always seems to go down pretty well with the fans. It is almost like they are just dragging us along, teasing us, giving us small pieces of Sam Fisher to keep us interested, but all we really want is a fully fledged new release. And with the release of the next generation of consoles being so close, now would be the perfect time to announce something. But it can't just be about the money. Although Blacklist didn't reach sales targets, it still sold over 2 million copies, which I would assume is still a fairly big profit. It shouldn't be the case of just giving up with the franchise. They should be adapting it to fit in with the trends of gaming. And I think this is where the bigger problem lies. Let's look at Splinter Cell games at face value. They are very linear, level-based games with little to no progression or customization. Then when you compare that to similar other Ubisoft titles, such as Ghost Recon, which, as I said, Sam Fisher has featured in, Ghost Recon is open world. It has a large focus on progression and unlocking new features or upgrading items and weapons. It has a fully customizable, playable character. It's extremely difficult to do these things in a Splinter Cell game. You can't really customize Sam because he is the very recognizable face of the game. And it wouldn't work if you could give him a huge blue mohawk and a bright pink jacket. The game is just too serious for that. And maybe with younger audiences growing accustomed to more recent popular games such as Fortnite, boasting super colorful visuals and customization, perhaps Splinter Cell just almost looks bland in comparison. Developers need to find a way to follow trends. An open world with progression and customization is almost expected in these sorts of games these days. Let's look at another franchise of a similar stealth action genre, one that Splinter Cell has had to compete with for years, Metal Gear Solid. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that we're huge fans of Metal Gear. So in MGS's most recent installment, Metal Gear Solid 5, it had a huge open world map which worked extremely well for the most part proving that it can be done in a stealth genre. And with the man behind MGS, Hideo Kojima, departing from Konami, it looks like there are no new stories planned in the future for Metal Gear. So now would, again, be the perfect time for a new Splinter Cell game. They even reference that Sam is the sole stealth game action hero in a nice touching scene in Ghost Recon Wildlands that features Sam. There was this other guy though, Army Infiltration, he wore Bandana or something. I heard he finally retired. Really? Yep. It's only me. So one more issue that we must consider. One that is also a huge issue for Konami when producing a new Metal Gear game. Both titles have huge, very opinionated and passionate fan bases. Fan bases that expect certain things from their favorite games. And when game developers try to do something new and fresh, they get ridiculed by fans. So it goes without saying that most game developers would feel pretty anxious about having to work on a project like this. It's a lot of pressure. A prime example for this would be the latest release, Splinter Cell Blacklist, which in my opinion, it was a fantastic game. It had me hooked from start to finish. It was cool, it was fun, and it was challenging at the right times. 
But the original voice for Sam Fisher, Michael Ironside, did not voice Sam Fisher. They lost that iconic voice, the voice that fans were used to hearing, which was a decision that fans really, really did not take kindly to, despite his replacement doing a fine job. It was just not what fans wanted from their favourite stealth game. Having said all this, fortunately, according to some rumours at least, it does look like they are taking a more serious look at a new Splinter Cell. And this is likely thanks to fans reacting so positively to his brief appearances in other games. But one question remains. If they are to put something new out, will it be a story continuation or a reboot? As we know that is something that happens all too often these days. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I literally cannot wait for a new Splinter Cell game. Let us know in the comments down below what you would like to see from a new release, a continuation or a reboot. We really hope you all enjoyed today's video. As of uploading this, we are super close to passing 1,000 subscribers. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help us out a lot. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and we will see you next time on Explore.